This is the ELN. It's a leftist anti-government group that is made up of more than 2,000 fighters plus militias based in the Colombian countryside. The group is a holdout in the country's peace process and is considered a terrorist organization by Colombia and several other governments, including the United States and the European Union. In January 2019, it set off a car bomb in the capital, Bogota, killing 21 people. And the Colombian military believes the ELN is expanding, possibly playing a new role in a different country altogether. Venezuela. We'll get to all that, but first, the story of the ELN. The ELN are a mix of a socialist and uh, like religious, like what they call liberation theology, guerrilla group. So what it does is called armed resistance. And so armed resistance is, I control this territory and I resist uh, the state, I resist multinational companies, and I work with communities, etc. The National Liberation Army, abbreviated as ELN in Spanish, emerged in the 1960s at the end of a period of political conflict known as La Violencia. The country's two main political parties agreed to share power, but excluded everyone else. That saw the rise of groups like the ELN, as well as the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, known as the FARC. The groups challenged the ruling elite, especially on land policies that hurt the rural poor. Funded by kidnapping and drug smuggling, they fought state forces and right-wing paramilitary groups in a decades-long civil conflict that is still largely unresolved. More than 260,000 people have died. Millions have been displaced. A peace deal in 2016 was supposed to end all that. It was meant to address rural poverty and offered political representation to revolutionaries in exchange for laying down their weapons. The deal has many critics, but the FARC signed on. The ELN was in talks with the government too, but those began to unravel when the current president, Ivan Duque, took office in August 2018. He's been against the deal from the start, and after the January bombing in Bogota, he suspended the talks. So while Colombia's peace process hangs in limbo, the ELN and other revolutionaries are filling the vacuum left by the FARC, expanding forces and territory. These images of the ELN were filmed in the West, where the FARC was once in control. The ELN is that new enemy public number one that has always existed, but has been invisible. Todo era FARC el que hacía, incluso acciones militares que hacíamos nosotros las acuñaban a FARC porque había que potenciar el enemigo público número uno. Reuters news agency says a confidential Colombian military report estimates the ELN increased its forces by nearly 8% in the first half of 2019. The same report says that along the eastern border, the ELN is getting recruits from Venezuela and possibly other support. El cabecilla del Frente de Guerra eh, Norte del ELN está en Venezuela, del Frente de Guerra Nororiental está en Venezuela, el cabecilla del Frente de Guerra Oriental del ELN está en Venezuela, alias eh, Pablito, todos ellos están, están en Venezuela. Not so, says the ELN. Hemos conocido, no reciente, sino desde hace varios años, eh, orientaciones circulares del organismo nacional que prohíben estar al otro lado. But many experts say the ELN's links to Venezuela give them staying power, especially as they share similar socialist ideas with the government of Nicolás Maduro. The presence of the ELN in Venezuela goes beyond just a, a, a hiding, a strategic place where they can hide from the Colombian government and, and, um, and avoid military action against them. Um, there, many of their leaders live there. Um, they also control a lot of territory where gold, illegal gold, is is uh, mined and trafficked. Same thing with drugs. Uh, same thing with Colton. It's not just about the money. They believe the ELN believes that it is an important actor that will defend the Maduro regime um, if there's an international, any sort of military intervention. So they see themselves as this this vanguard guerrilla group that will defend. Uh, 20th century, 20th century, 21st century socialism in Venezuela from a, a U.S. invasion or, or any other country. But the ELN has a problem. Unity. Right now, the most important thing for the ELN, because of this autonomy and because they have a history of infighting, 
uh, through its 50 plus years of existence, there's a pretty big history of infighting. Maintaining unity and cohesion is the most important thing for the ELN and the ELN leadership. That's more important to them than peace. So if that means they don't negotiate, they don't come to a peace agreement in order to maintain internal cohesion, that's what they do. Internal disputes aside, the ELN is gaining new footholds in rural communities. Remember, land reform was one of the main reasons the ELN took up arms in the first place. Not much has changed. A recent report by Oxfam International shows that just 1% of the population holds 80% of the land. Mientras que no hay un gobierno de, de cambio, de transformaciones, va a ser muy imposible que este ELN deje las armas. So as far as the ELN is concerned, there's plenty left to fight for.